Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the very bittersweet finale for the Partners in Cream Project Pan. I'll speak more about my kind of like reflections and where my head's at at the end of today's video, but this is a collaboration project pan that was started back in 2020 and I really wish that I had joined it last year, to be honest, but I'm so, so happy that I decided to join in for 2021. And we definitely have to thank Stefan Delin for coming up with this amazing, very simple, yet extremely effective and ingenious project pan idea. The name Partners in Cream really just implies that we're using our cream products. So anything that is not a powder is fair game for this project pan, whether it be makeup, nail polish, any other beauty category, if it's a liquid or cream, you can use it in this project and you can work on anything between three to six products, which I think is just great. It's like more of a smaller size project pan. And I ended up adopting a kind of idea from Haley. So she was using half of her products as a usage goal and half of the products as a completion goal. And it ended up being such a great thing for me to take on and to adopt for this project pan. I have been working on this for the entirety of this year and I am pretty amazed that we're already at the end of this project pan already. But yes, I'm gonna share with you all of the progress that I've made over this project pan and kind of share with you a little bit of a wrap up at the end of today's video as well. This is my second time filming this video. I did not intend to film at all today. So hence the hair being up, I never ever film with my hair up unless I'm like actually just doing my makeup. Uh, great. <laughs> it is what it is, but just got to suck it up. The audio of the last video was horrendous. I'm really hoping that the audio on this one is better. So we're just gonna crack into a kombucha and this is my lunch break today. So let's do it. Let's get on into all the progress that I've made as I'm wrapping up this project pan. So let's kick it off with the product that I rolled in in my last update. This is the Pixie Glow Mist. I did not intend to finish this off. I only rolled it in one month ago. So I just was hoping to kind of make some visible progress and just kind of monitor how I was using this product and get to know it a little bit better. I had about a third of the product remaining um, in my last update and I've been reaching for this almost like habitually. I've been really enjoying reaching for it. So I only have the teeniest, tiniest bit of product left in here. I am wearing this today. I am now just motivated to finish it off by the end of the year because of how quickly I was able to make that much progress. I've just been really enjoying reaching for this. I feel like it helps to settle down a powdery kind of look if I've kind of gone a little bit crazy with powders or even if I've just built up a little bit too much concealer like under this darkest spot under my eyes if I'm feeling like that spot just looks a little cakey I just go in with this and it's like a miracle product that just makes everything meld together and I don't find that it's overly dewy but it does give a glowy very natural skin like kind of finish to my complexion and it's it's really easy to just gravitate towards and use pretty much every single day, sometimes multiple times a day if my skin just feels like it needs a little bit of a pick-me-up. I've been really, really enjoying it and I'm so happy I put it into this project pan and I will be finishing it off for my end of the year empties, hopefully. I mean, I will, I will for sure. And let's talk about the products that I was actually actively trying to complete. I've had these in the project for several months. The first one I wanna talk about is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek. This is in the shade Blow Me Out. This is a pearlized finish that was limited edition. And this is like one of those cream to powder kind of textures. It's really great. I really do enjoy this formula. And I wanted to finish it off. Earlier in this year, I was feeling a little bit more optimistic as we were going into more of the summer kind of months. I put this into this project thinking I'd wear it on my shoulders, collarbone, I would wear it down my legs. And that just didn't end up being the case for me. And now I've lost some of my summer tan. So come like September, October, I was feeling kind of like I wasn't able to reach for this product. So as you can see, I still have a ton of product remaining in here. However, over this past month, I feel like I finally made more progress than I have in the past, um, past few months rather, because I used to, in the summer, be able to wear this kind of like on top of my complexion products. So it could be like used as a more standard kind of highlighter. But as you can see here, I 
do have a little bit more of a fair complexion than this really is meant for at this time of year. So there's a lot of base pigment. It definitely looks quite orangey, kind of bronzy on me. In like September and October, in order to make consistent progress, um, I was just reaching for it underneath of my foundation. So I put this on as like a bronzy, glowy, kind of almost priming base. And then I would put my foundation, concealer, all my other cheek products on top of it, and I wouldn't be able to use it on top of those products or I didn't think I could. But in this past month, I really feel like I was able to kind of use this not only underneath of my foundation, but also on top of my base products as kind of like my last step in my cream cheek routine. What I've been doing recently and how I've been able to almost get to like side pan here is I will just use my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and I will use that brush to apply a cream bronzer and then go into this product just on the very, very edge of the brush and use this like as a bronzer topper on top of a cream bronzer. And so I'm not using it as like a dedicated highlight per se, but I'm just using it as like an all over glow kind of topper shade and I love it. I used to only ever use my fingers with this product. I had never really ever used a brush whatsoever with this product and using a brush with it allows it to apply a little bit more sheer and it allows that glow to be amplified, but the base pigment seems to almost like buff out. So I kind of have a newfound love for this product, even though I thought that it was something that wasn't really tailored to me at this time of year. I've come to really enjoy it and find a way to use it. And yes, I did not finish it up, but I should be able to finish it in 2022, I imagine, because I did make really great progress on this product in the past. And now I have a newfound love and appreciation for it that I'm really excited to continue to keep reaching for it. Today, I'm wearing it underneath of my base products as I did in the past, um, but I'm wearing a different highlighter today because I didn't really anticipate we were gonna be chatting about these products today. So, um, even though I thought this project was wrapped up, I still did reach for it today and I imagine I'll be reaching for it in the coming months for sure. And then the other product I have here is the Bite Beauty Amuse-Bouche Lipstick in the shade Honeycomb. This is a discontinued shade. When Bite kind of did their rebrand, they never ended up bringing this color back, which is really unfortunate because it is one of my absolute favorites in my collection. And I rolled it into this project hoping that I would finish it off, but really not expecting that to be the case because I had a lot of product in here. I just wanted to ensure I was reaching for it really frequently, getting the use out of it because it is a part of my collection and it's a product that I absolutely love. And I'm really happy to say that although I've not finished it quite yet, I've pretty much gotten it flush with the packaging at this point. So as you can see, that's that like inner uh, plastic rim there. It's pretty much flush with that and I am wearing it today. I just kind of threw it on before I decided to film today, but there's a swatch of it. It's a beautiful, beautiful lipstick color. It's like one of my favorite kinds of shades because it's not one of those like pinky, mauve -y kinds of nudes. It's got this like grayish kind of undertone to it, beigey, yellowy kind of color. It's super unique, but it's also extremely flattering in my opinion. I love the way that it looks with my coloring. And yeah, I've made amazing progress on it in this project pan, like seriously, really great progress. So it's pretty much flush, flush with the packaging, which I know that's where a lot of people do consider products to be empty. In my opinion, it's not empty by my own standards or like the way that I like to pan. I like to dig into my product um, and I really like to get every last drop of product out of things, especially if it's a product I love and this is a product that I adore. So. My thoughts are that now that it's um, completely flush with the packaging, I'm going to eventually dig it out, decant it, put it into some other sort of compact and use it as a hybrid lip and cheek product. I have been reaching for it very frequently as that kind of situation already, but it'll just make it so much easier to have it in a compact. Really happy with the progress I've made. So, so happy with the progress I've made actually. This is really exciting and also, a little sad because this is one of my favorite shades, but I still have probably months of product ahead of me um, once I dig into this. I don't know quite yet, but I just have a feeling it's gonna 
it's gonna have quite a bit more product in here. And the other item that I've been trying to finish off is one that I rolled in only a couple updates ago actually, but I had already really great progress on it, so I thought I would definitely be able to finish it off. It is the Milani Prime Light Face Primer. I'm just trying to get this situated. As you can probably see, I have actually cut into it. I had only like this much product left when I had initially rolled it into the project pan. And last update, I was down to this point in the packaging. So very little product left in here. However, um, only a couple days ago, I ended up not being able to squeeze any more product out of here. So I cut into it and I used my makeup spatula to take every last possible drop of product out of here. Your products are never really empty when you think they are because I ended up decanting it into an old Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade and there's very little product left in here. However, it's not yet completely done. It's very, very close and it'll only take me probably about a week or so to finish this off. There's very little product in here but it's not quite done. It will be done by the end of 2022. There's no doubt about that. So I'm hella close to my goal, but not quite there. I'm considering it a goal hit though. Let's say it's a goal hit. Really happy with how much I was able to use this, especially considering the first month that I had in this project, I had used it maybe like one or two times. And then I, I really had to get my butt in gear to kind of actually make the progress that I wanted. So if I had used it more in that first month it was in this project, I think we would be in a different situation. I would have it empty by now, but it is what it is. It's so close to done. There's very, very little product left in here. I've been using this kind of as like the last step of my skincare routine, first step of my makeup routine. So as soon as I put on my sunscreen, which is my last step of my uh, skincare routine in the morning, I kind of let that just settle a tiny little bit and then I just douse my entire face with this primer, whether I'm wearing makeup or not, just so that I have a little bit of glow, a little bit of shine, and I get a good use out of the product as well. So I've been like taking it down my neck and if I'm wearing a lower uh, neckline, I'll kind of bring it onto my chest just to make everything look uniform all across my face, the whole shebang. And I've been really enjoying it, but it is time for it to work its way out of my collection. There's very little left and I have so many other glowy products that I can use in its place. And I just ordered the Auric Glow Lust also like a couple weeks ago. I still don't have it here yet, but it's time for me to say goodbye to this. So yeah, you will see it in my makeup empties at the end of 2021 for sure. And the fifth product that I currently have in this project pan is the only um, like usage goal product that I have outstanding right now. I previously always had three usage products in this project, but as we were getting closer to the end, I just ended up deciding to kind of switch things up for a short while. But yes, this product is the ColourPop No Filter Sticks Foundation Stick. I have mine in the shade Light 67N. I rolled this in a couple months ago with the goal of trying to use it 40 times, and that felt pretty steep, but I figured I'd be able to do that by the end of the year. However, last update, I was already at 39 uses on it because I was really enjoying reaching for this. This product is something that kind of caught me by surprise. Um, if you had asked me how I felt about this product only a short while ago, I would have said either I had zero impression on it or it was just like a product that for whatever reason was still lingering in my collection, but I just didn't care for it. And now I've come to actually quite enjoy it and I have an appreciation for it that I never knew that I would have had in the past thanks to setting that usage goal. So it is a stick foundation, but I've been using it a lot of the time as a spot concealer or as an under eye concealer because it has this nice creamy texture that just works for those kind of instances. I have been also wearing it as a full on foundation from time to time. I can make it a little bit more sheer by applying it with a brush or I can just swipe it onto my face and then buff it out with a sponge or a brush and I can get a bit more full coverage. So it's been really interesting because I've been able to customize this quite a lot. I guess that's not totally the point, but last update I already had 39 uses on it. So I had set myself a goal to reach for it, um, to, to bring that to 55 uses instead. However, I blew that out of the water. I used it an additional 25 times, bringing me to 64 uses on this thing. So. There's barely any product left that's visible in the bullet here, which is great. When I first rolled this in, there was a lot of product. It kind of felt daunting um, because I thought I was never ever gonna use this product up because I just didn't care for it. But I found 
that I'm really happy to be reaching for it. It became, again, one of those things that almost was like habitual. I was reaching for this so often and not feeling like it was an obligation, but that I was actually just enjoying the process of getting to know this a little bit better. Um, and yeah, this is something I'll definitely be finishing off in the new year, which is so exciting to me because this is not something I would have ever thought would ever be finished in my collection. I would just be lingering until the day it expired, <laughs> but super happy with the progress I have made. I can't believe I reached for it 65 freaking times. That's more than I reached for any other base product in my collection, I'm sure. I finished two tinted moisturizers this year, so probably I reached for those about that, that, about that amount of time, but I didn't track anything, you know? So I'm super happy with the progress, and yeah, that feels like a really good wrap up. That is all five products that I had been working on previously in this project pan. It feels a little bit sad to be saying goodbye to this project pan because if you watched my most recent video, there was a time like about a month ago where I was feeling extremely overwhelmed with project panning and I was feeling like I just had too many focus products. But this project pan was a really good learning experience for me because I was primarily having like a little bit of that balance between usage and completion goals. And so I feel like although I was focusing on a wide variety of products, I really got to understand my own panning style needs to have that balance. And so that was a really good learning kind of moment for me. I'm really happy that I did decide to do that for this project. And that is something I'm gonna take into my future project pans. However, I will not be participating in the Partners in Cream project pan next year. I really want to just focus on allowing myself to find that balance of the type of content I wanna uh, create here, but also using my collection a little bit more wholly and a little bit more naturally as well, while still having focused project pan uh, content and products. So next year, I'm just going to be doing a little bit more of a solo kind of project panning journey. We'll see, that might not be the forever case, but that's what I'm hoping to just kick off the new year with. So as much as I had so much fun with this project, every time I sat down to film these videos, I was really excited to share with you the progress that I made. I just feel like for my own, you know, mental space, next year we're gonna be taking a break from this project pan. I'm very, very happy that I decided to do this project pan because I feel like liquid and cream products are very much having their moment right now. They're very, very much on trend. So it was really good for me during my no buy year to be able to focus on products that tend to expire a little bit more quickly and things that you know we're seeing more releases of that I already had in my own collection and I was able to focus on them and use them and get that feeling of you know, the, the current trend with things I already own. So I'm really happy I decided to, to do this project pan. I highly recommend it if you're interested in doing any kind of collaboration project pan next year. Please let me know if you're gonna decide to do it in the new year, if you're thinking about doing it in the new year because I'd love to keep up with your journey. I am definitely gonna be watching the playlist for next year's project so, so much because I just loved this project so much. I loved watching other people creating and participating in this project. So a huge thank you to Stefan Delin for this project pan idea. I will have them both linked down in the description box and in the end card upcoming very shortly. I will also have the community playlist linked down in the description box and in the end card. And if you wanna go check out other creators doing this project pan, please, please, please head on over to Instagram and use the hashtag partners in cream 2021 to go and see everyone's wrap up to this project pan. But that is a wrap. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I really do appreciate it more than you know. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.